you'll wind up resenting everybody else around you for not noticing that you were unhappy and they contributed to your unhappiness. And that's nobody's fault but your own because you didn't express that you were unhappy. What's up babes? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Christiana and I am back with another video. Today's video is going to be a girl talk. I asked you guys some questions on Instagram and you guys sent in a lot of good topics for me to discuss in today's video. This video has been long overdue so these questions are pretty old but these topics are still awesome so I wanted to touch on them while I beat this mug. So if you're interested in seeing how I got this look and hearing my thoughts on a few topics. We're gonna to talk about some relationship based topics today, honey. If you're interested in hearing it, then just keep watching. All right, so I already clipped my hair back. I filled in my eyebrows and I'm gonna be working out of this Jaclyn Hill Divine Neutrals palette. This is what it looks like. It's super pretty. It's been my favorite palette lately. And I'm just gonna be using this Morphe um, M441 brush. So, you guys sent me a lot of good topics. I'm only gonna pick a few to address so that way I can like dive into them. Um, okay, so one topic I definitely wanna address because I feel like I can give like a good perspective on it. Somebody said dating and social media age, boundaries, absolute no-nos, and how to manage time with it. So um, I think that this is such a good topic because not only am I a person on social media, but so is my fiance. Um, for, so for those of you who don't know, my fiance is, and I say, and FYI, I have my ring off because I'm doing my makeup. But anyway, um, my fiance is Nova the Barber. Um, she's really popular on TikTok specifically. Um, and we had to have a conversation. So my first thing what I would say is communicate. You have to communicate. Um, what you guys see as respect, disrespect, um, things that matter, things that don't matter. So like very early on in our talking stage, we talked about um, like, are you the kind of person that needs your significant other to post you on social media all the time? Like does that, do you feel like your significant other doesn't love you if they don't do that? And um, you know, is that a way that you need to show your love and we both agreed that it wasn't something that was important to us um, especially being that our platforms are for very different things we both understand the importance of our platforms being for our niche so um, that communication really helped us because it let me know like okay great like she's not gonna be upset because I take pictures like I'm a fashion beauty lifestyle kind of content creator so Couples pictures may fit in sometimes, but it's not gonna be like what people do just when they use their Instagram casually. Um, so yeah, so we had to have a conversation about that. And once we agreed that we were on the same page on when it came to showing our significant others on there, then we could kind of talk about like things that matter to us, things that didn't matter to us. So like, if you got a partner who is constantly double tapping pictures of half naked women, and that bothers you that's a conversation you need to have early on with somebody because typically and this is just kind of what i feel somebody will tell you the truth earlier on than they will mid relationship because mid relationship now they're afraid of losing you most people lie in relationships because they're afraid to lose the person that they have if a person hasn't had you yet they're less compelled to lie to you so if you ask straight up, you know, like, hey, you know, um, you know, we're in the digital age. How do you feel about your significant other liking, um, revealing your promiscuous pictures of the opposite sex or whatever, however your orientation is? Um, if they say like, oh, it's not a big deal to me, you know, I don't care. That's the kind of person that's going to be double tapping pictures of ass all day long. So if that bothers you, you know, right off the bat, that's not your kind of person. So definitely set your standards up front. And don't be afraid to vocalize what does and doesn't bother you. Um, you can't expect somebody to meet your needs if you don't communicate what they are. So I would definitely say, you know, that's a boundary. If you have a problem with that, set your boundary. Have a communication about it. Have a, a, have a conversation about it. You can't expect somebody to uphold your boundaries that they have no idea what they are. So um, I would say communicate. Identify what bothers you. Communicate about it. And then 
move forward and see how things go and make sure that you have a partner who aligns in the same place with you me personally i wouldn't know if my fiance was double tapping pictures of ass all day long or not because i don't go through her phone i've never touched her phone without her permission so um i wouldn't know what she's double tapping um and nor do i care and that was a conversation we had and i'm glad that we had it um absolute no-nos for me um being flirtatious flirty dms anything flirtatious anything you wouldn't do in my face that's an absolute no-no for me um but that's kind of the only absolute no-no that i have when it comes to social media Ooh, okay so this is a topic that i know all too well about somebody said dating as a plus size woman i think that my experience is a little bit unique and let me just kind of touch on why my experience is unique um one because i have the acceptable plus size body we all know what it is all plus size women we know what the acceptable plus size body is it's the flatter stomach the smaller waist the bigger hips the bigger butt that's all you see in the media up until recently people are really working on actually being inclusive but um still and yet that's what you see majority of the time when you see plus size representation you see the acceptable plus size body hence that is me so i don't get a lot of the outright I don't get a lot of the outright degradation degradation that a lot of plus size women get um okay so we all know that trouble with dating um as a plus size woman comes from society not valuing plus size people in general right we're not valued in healthcare. we're not valued in the workplace we're not valued in beauty we're not valued in fashion we're just not valued we are the lesser of everything um, society has taught people in general and men in specific that a plus size woman deserves less um, and has taught them that you can judge how a person cares for themselves based on their body type which is completely ridiculous right but if you're um, if you're plus size then you must not care about your health you must not care about yourself you probably have low self-esteem because the world has been beating you down since the time you reached over 150 pounds whatever it is people have internalized that a lot of plus size women have internalized that when it comes to how they date meaning they accept less because they feel like they don't deserve more um and the plus size women who do not accept less usually find dating to be a little bit more difficult so you run into men who don't really want to take you on dates because society doesn't view you as beautiful so they don't want to be seen with you um yeah so a lot of times they don't want to be seen with you or they feel like you they too believe that you can't do any better so they don't really have to be that great to you um yeah so they don't really have to be that great to you um and they think that you'll stick around no matter what Everybody knows that dating with the plus, as a plus size woman is difficult. And I can't stand people who say, well, you should just love yourself. Yeah, I love myself, which is why dating is hard. Because if I was okay with freaking Tom who don't have a job and wants to drive my car all day long, I'd be all right. But no, I want a good person. So yeah, it's a little difficult. Um, so my advice, if you're dating as a plus size woman, Number one, it's probably the same advice anybody else is going to give you. Set your standards and keep them there. Do not lower your standards because you feel like your standards are too high and you're not going to get a good person, a good man, because you're plus size. You deserve happiness just as much as everybody else. One. Two, I would seek out actual good people. Make sure that you're, you're dating a person that's actually a good person person a lot of people that you be interested in are not good people in general you wouldn't like them if you didn't have a romantic interest in them if you weren't physically attracted to them or whatever it is that attracted you to them you wouldn't like them outside of that um so make sure that the person that you're dealing with is just an actual good person i would never date somebody who treated people that they found attractive differently than people they don't they don't find attractive um so like if i'm out with somebody and we go out one time 
and the waitress they don't find the waitress attractive so they're rude to her but then the next time we get another waitress and she's pretty they're nice to her oh no sir oh no oh no you got to go if you're interested in a man he wants to, he wants to get together with you and he's like oh you know let's kick it come to my place and kick it uh freaking uh Oh, I'm gonna come through and you know, maybe you could cook dinner or come to my place. I'm gonna cook for you. Any of that? No, 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 no. I need you outside with me. Period. I need you outside with me because I need to know that you actually find me beautiful and you're proud to be with me. Um, so that's another clear indication. If you're a plus size woman and somebody hits you up wanting to get to know you and they don't want to take you out on a date, first of all, if they're not even proposing a date, they definitely don't see value in you. They're fetishizing you. Um, Another clear indication to me was when somebody called me sexy versus beautiful. Um, a lot of times as a plus size woman, we get fetishized so badly and it's so frustrating. And that is one thing that I constantly have had to fight against, not only in my dating life, but in my career on social media. People look at me, they look at my body and they see sex. That's it. They find me sexy. They don't find me beautiful. Um, so... If you're communicating with a potential date and they're complimenting you and all they're calling you is sexy, they're only using physical compliments, they're only talking about your body parts when they describe how beautiful you are, if they even call you beautiful, that's a red flag that they're fetishizing you and that this is probably going to be a bad date or a waste of your time. So that would be my number one thing too. Right off the bat, watch how they describe you, watch how they interact with you, one. Two. If they're trying to take you out, make sure they're trying to take you out. Do not let them hide you. If they if they seem like they're pushing against going out in public with you, end it right then and there. They don't see value in you. Lastly, make that man court you. Do not let him think he got the easy catch because he wanted a plus size woman because to me that's an indication that you really don't like plus size women make that man court you make him take you out on several days make him open doors for you make him treat you make him treat you like a lady if he feels like all of that is too much work for you he don't really like plus size women and you dodged a bullet but it is it is more difficult um today as a plus size woman because you've got all the societal expectations all the societal standards, all the cultural beauty standards, all the European beauty standards working against you, especially if you're a plus size black woman. Let's not even get into that. Um, but just stand your ground. Know that the person that is for you is coming. And when you get the person, you won't ever be at risk for having the wrong person because you never changed your standards. All right. The last one, the last topic I'm going to touch on, which I think it's going to be my longest topic is going to be how to leave a toxic relationship. I feel like, number one, I feel like if you need to get out of that relationship, you know it. You know, this is, okay, this is what, this is gonna be the kicker. This is what I had to think about when I knew I needed to leave a relationship. I thought about if I hit the lotto, what would I do? If you hit the lotto right now, what would you do? Like. As far as your relationship and literally when I thought about it I was like, if I hit the lotto I break him off like a million dollars and be like I wish you the best and when I thought about that like in my perfect world in my most easygoing world he does not exist in it I was like oh no I got to leave so number one if there is something keeping you in the relationship besides the fact that this person is amazing for you you know it's time for you to go. I don't care how many good times y'all have had. I don't care what, what y'all have together, what y'all built together. I don't care how much time you had in it. That'd be another thing, keeping people in toxic relationships. Oh, we've been together four or five years. Okay, then you shouldn't want to waste another second getting the hell up out of there. You got to go. So number one, you're going to have to learn to let go of all those things that were all the things that were how they used to treat you how they used to be what you built together all the things that were let them go two let go of all the things that could be that be the hardest part especially when you fall in love young you fall in love with somebody's potential 
and at that point in time that's all they have is potential like if you fell in love with somebody in college you fell in love with somebody when you were really young you fell in love with who they could be because at that point in time anybody could be anybody you don't know you know nobody's anybody just yet and anybody could be somebody um so you're gonna have to let go of all the things that could be he could be a rapper he could be a millionaire he could be a mogul let go of all that stuff because what he could be no longer concerns you what he is right now is the only thing that you need to think about the last thing you're gonna have to let go of is focusing on who he is to everybody else Sometimes we attribute how somebody is to everybody else as their character. And to some degree it is their character, but who they are within relationships is also their character. So if they're, you know, if they're good to their mom, oh, he's so good with his family though. That ain't got nothing to do with you. Nothing. Oh, he's such a good dad. Okay, he can be a good dad outside of that relationship. If he's a good dad, he'll continue to be a good dad. Now remember, we're talking about toxic relationships. We're not talking about, oh, you know, you're going through a rough patch. I would never tell nobody with kids or nobody in a relationship if you're in a rough patch to leave. That ain't my place. But if you know it's toxic, these are the things you need to think about. So let go of who he is to everybody else. I don't care how good of a dad he is. I don't care how good of a brother, mom, dog he is. Is he those things for you? You matter if nobody told you today. You matter. Your wants, your needs, your desires, they matter. A lot of time, women, we find our worth in who we are to other people. We find our worth in how good of a mom we are, how good of a friend we are, how good of a spouse we are. We find our worth in how helpful we are to other people. But you got to think about you. Because what will happen is you'll wind up resenting everybody else around you for not noticing that you were unhappy and they contributed to your unhappiness and that's nobody's fault but your own because you didn't express that you were unhappy and you did nothing to change your unhappiness so anyway so once you've kind of you know mentally separated yourself right you're looking at who this person is for who they are and they're no good for you you guys start training your mind this person is no good for me no matter who they're going to be in the future, no matter who they used to be, they're no good for me. Then you got to start making a plan. A lot of women don't leave because they don't have a plan, especially if you got things like assets, money, you know, your living situation, all those things tied up. Um, if you don't have any of those things tied up, baby, what you waiting on? Mentally separate yourself and go. People underestimate the healing power of time. You can get over or learn to deal with anything with the right amount of time. So if you don't live with somebody and they're toxic, don't start and leave. For you, it's that simple. It's just, do you really wanna do it? And um, you'll know when you're fed up. Everybody knows. No matter how much you can vent and complain, talk to your friends, oh girl, he ain't shit, oh girl, he hurt me, he broke my heart, he cheated on me again, blah, 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 blah. You know when you're actually fed up. You know when you want somebody to just hear you, when you just want to cry, and when you're actually tired. When you're actually tired, start making a plan. This is how you leave. You start mentally separating yourself. You start working on a plan. Whatever seems like a downside to leaving them, work on making it no longer a downside. So if they're the breadwinner and they pay all the bills, and you don't know how you're going to afford the rent without their income, your first mission is to start making a plan to change your living situation. Whether that be picking up another job so you have the income, finding a roommate, moving in with your parents, whatever you gotta do, come up with that plan. You have to make every, every negative to leaving that person, you gotta change it or you're never gonna leave. If it's, oh, you know, I'm afraid of being alone. Start doing things by yourself. When he's at work, have a date by yourself. Watch a movie by yourself. Go shopping by yourself. Go to lunch. Read a book. Do something by yourself. Start getting comfortable with doing things by yourself. Every negative to leaving that person, you got to make a positive. So, baby, change those positives into a negative. Come up with a plan. And then execute. Have a friend. Have a family member on standby. Have them waiting outside for you. Have somebody on standby to help keep you accountable so you don't back out. Whether it's calling your friend and being like, hey girl, 
I'm breaking up with this nigga today. If I don't call you back in 20 minutes, call me. Make sure I'm following through with it. Come up with a plan. And especially if you're dating a narcissist, come up with a plan and leave the area. Um, Cause they're gonna manipulate you into staying. And one thing that you're gonna have to do is, and this is just one thing that I've learned when breaking up with people in general, don't ever make it about what they didn't do. No matter how angry you are, no matter how much it is 100% their fault. They cheated on you, they disrespected you, they didn't come through when they supposed to. Whatever they did, don't talk about any of it. You do not need closure from them. Closure is a setup, closure is a trap. You only talk about how you feel. Things they cannot debate. So if they cheat on you, you just say, you know what? I can't be in this relationship. I don't feel like you respect me. I don't feel respected. I don't feel appreciated. How, how, how don't you feel appreciated? How don't you feel respected? Your actions have shown that you don't respect me. But never make it about, oh, you cheated on me, so that's why I'm leaving. Cause that's gonna offer them room to feel like they can do something different. When you know you're done, you're done. And there's nothing else that they can say to change that. Make it about you. Make it about your feelings, what you need, what you're not getting. They can't argue you on what you feel. And if they try, you end the conversation. Do not be afraid to end a conversation. Do not be afraid to leave the room. If you said your piece and they're trying to manipulate you, Recognize that, point that out. I feel as though you're trying to manipulate me right now. The conversation is not going in a way that is productive for either one of us. I'm gonna go ahead and leave. But please understand that I meant what I said. We are done. Be calm, even though it hurts, even though this person may have taken you through the ringer, you have to handle that calmly so that you know and they know that you're thinking clearly, you're thinking level-headed, you're not thinking with your emotions, you are done. And then separate yourself from them for a little while. Whether it be they're going to somebody else's place, you're going to somebody else's place, go visit your family, go visit your parents, go visit your best friend, go visit your dog, I don't care. But get away from them physically so you can start distancing yourself emotionally. I personally do not believe in that whole Oh, we're broken up, but he needs a place to stay, so we're gonna live together. I think it's a trap. I think it's very easy for you to fall back into old patterns and thus fall back into your relationship. Um, so make sure that you get physical distance so that you can start working on your emotional distance. All right, I'm gonna hop off camera and do my lips real quick because of course I can't talk and do my lips. All right, y'all, that is all I have for y'all today. I really hope that y'all enjoyed this quick little um, get ready with me, girl talk edition. I feel like I'm always rambling when I do these because I be having so many thoughts I have to get out, but I hope that you guys followed. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Please leave your thoughts on any of these topics down below. Let's have a discussion. Just keep it respectful, keep it cute. If you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and I will catch y'all on the next one. Bye.